Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Thank him for the abundance of his grace in this place. Thank him for his word. He has gathered us to bless us. He has gathered us to lift us. He has gathered us to wipe our tears. Someone pray. Are you praying to the God of all grace? Lift your voice with faith in your heart. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him I don't know. Thy kingdom come. Hello, him I don't know. I don't know. Thy kingdom come. Thy will, thy will be done. Hello, hello, him I don't know. minute I like you to verbalize your expectations father I have come give me an encounter father I am here turn my morning to dancing turn my sorrow to joy go ahead verbalize your expectations I will not walk out of this place with this medical report this sickness this infirmity this yoke upon my life, this embargo of shame and reproach, it must drop finally tonight. A believer is crying to the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and declare. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Koinonia Global, cry to the God of all grace. Declare your expectation tonight, U.S., Canada, U.K., South Africa, Ghana, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Abuja, Lagos, Jos, Maiduguri, Port Harcourt, all across the globe, those connecting online, make sure you are an active part of this prayer. Verbalize your request. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Wipe my tears. Give me a testimony. Let a song of joy emanate from my spirit on account of your workings in my life tonight. Show me your salvation tonight. Open up closed doors tonight. Rewrite my story tonight. Give me a turn around tonight. This is part of the service already. Are you praying? Be full of faith. Cry out your expectation. Outside, are you praying? All the overflows. All the viewing centers. Connect by faith. Cry as you pray to the God of all grace. Shabata balake parata kaprande gebereke paratos. Shabarante bereke tibalaka prande gebereke tos. Oh, I go forward tonight. I go forward tonight. I make progress. I access the graces required for the next level of my life. I access the graces required for the next level of ministry. I access the graces required for the next dimension of kingdom exploits. Someone is praying for clarity and direction. 
in the name of Jesus that in the course of the service you will hear him speak he will appear unto you by his word like he did unto Samuel in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray final prayer and then you'll be seated father the discernment the discernment to recognize my word when it comes the discernment to know it is me you are speaking about when you speak I obtain that grace I reject the carelessness of Jacob the Lord is in this place and I will know the Lord is visiting me and I will know that when my word comes I will not be insensitive when my word comes I will not be careless when my word comes I will not be undiscerning someone is praying your answers are the mercy of his word when he sends his word with his word healing comes with his word deliverance comes with his word liftings come I obtain grace to be sensitive I receive grace to be discerning that when my word come I will know it was sent by God for me in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray father we cry that you will do us good tonight we cry that you will do us good tonight we cry that you will lift burdens tonight we cry that you will give people a new song tonight we cry that there will be spectacular miracles in this place tonight we cry that even while in church testimonies will meet people in church that whilst people are here in church good news will arrive their phones their emails that whilst they are in church others will be in a hurry to let them know what God is already doing in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over someone that even before the service is ended you would already be sharing your testimony visitations by the mighty God of heaven if you are that person shout a believing amen one more time hallelujah walk up to three people and tell them be expectant three people and by faith challenge them encourage them be that prophet for one minute over their lives midwife their breakthroughs tell them be expectant you may be gloriously seated the Lord bless you welcome to a miracle service for the month of October celebrate Jesus hallelujah the Lord has raised this ministry as a burning bush and you saw the fire burning and you came through the fire you will hear his voice and from his voice you will receive spectacular miracles you see our confidence in doing the things that we do is the fact that God is here not just that he's alive our confidence is number one that God is in the midst of his people the Bible says the Lord in the midst of his people is mighty number two we are confident that his word is in our midst because where the word of a king is the Bible declares there is power power to heal power to lift power to rewrite stories power to deliver that which God intended for you from the eons of time are we together and wherever the word is there is also grace because he came full of grace and truth he says sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth so everywhere his word is grace and peace even that which can be multiplied is also there that means someone you came into this place but you are about to encounter an impartation you will truly contact grace grace that will speak in your life from today grace for exploits in ministry grace to bring an end to every wilderness the Bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness be counted for a fruitful field and a fruitful field for a forest I pray over someone your season of dryness has come to an end 
whatever dryness means for you whether it's finances whether it is lack of helpers in the name of Jesus I pray for you already that wilderness by the reign of the Spirit tonight it must be turned to a forest in the name of Jesus Christ and so we can confidently welcome you to a place of real solutions we are not the fig tree with leaves without fruits there are enough fruits for everyone to take and the Bible tells us that um, they that be planted in the house of God they shall flourish in the courts of our God but they will not just stop there it says in old age they will be fat and flourishing are we together now it shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside it yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatsoever he does whatsoever he does he doeth prospers you will prosper in the name of Jesus I want you to be very attentive to the Word of God because when the Word of God comes so comes his power the direction of God's Word is the direction of God's power whatever God is saying is what he wants to do when he speaks his power moves the direction of his word to bring performance and I want you to be very sensitive there is a lot to do tonight I sense in my heart that people came with burdens and came with hunger there are people who came insisting to see the glory of God and I assure you by the God of heaven you will not be disappointed and let me tell you the truth it doesn't matter whether you are here in the main auditorium or any of the overflows outside you know any of our viewing centers or anywhere at all I want you to believe that God is able to come through for you right where you are in the name of Jesus Christ the woman with the issue of blood did not have an opportunity to walk with Jesus directly she sat down and said to herself that as he passes by I know he's fair enough to reach my direction and when he comes I will touch the helm of his garment and I shall be made whole and among the many people who were thronging on to Jesus, a woman came with faith and expectation. She touched the helm of his garment and that was the end of it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Lord will do you good tonight. Be sensitive for your word. If it's a word, a prophetic word and it concerns you, make sure you are up to hear. And if it is you, if you are required to come, you come quickly. So that you do not waste the time of others from receiving their own word hallelujah participate in the service don't be a spectator and don't think that god is visiting others then leaving you aside no the god of the bible the god of koinonia visits everyone because this promise is unto you to your children to your children's children even as many as are far of those who the lord will call he has called you tonight he will do you good shout a believers amen there are two questions we need to answer tonight but then I'll start with Psalm 77 we'll read 12 to 15 and then we'll attempt to answer two questions as a charge to build up our faith and we'll trust the God of all grace the miracle worker to step in and surprise you one more time in the name of Jesus Christ I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doing verse 13 it says thy way O God is in the sanctuary who is so great a God as our God verse 14 it says thou art the God that doeth wonders thou hast declared thy strength among the people final verse thou hast with thy arm redeemed thy people the sons of Joseph of Jacob and of Joseph with his mighty arm he will redeem you tonight Amen. the first question tonight is how real are supernatural interventions how real are miracles is it true that God is able to visit his people what is the proof how real because there are many believers who come to God but sincerely as much as they come to church as much as they love God they have not settled as a revelation that God is able to move upon people and to give them testimonies how real are miracles how real are signs and wonders is it true that God heals is it true that God heals supernaturally 
is it true that God delivers is it true that a man can come to God oppressed and walk away free is it true that a man can come to God sick plagued of every kind of infirmity you have the testimony of you know the the fellow that talked about eating you know unable to eat you can imagine that kind of demonic situation when you're not able to eat when you're not able to retain food retain water that is not sickness that is the spirit of death because man lives by bread and the word whatever stops you from eating bread and stops you from receiving the word must be the thief that comes to kill to steal and to destroy are we together two things you need to live an excellent life bread and the word of God bread for your bodily sufficiency the word of God for the strengthening of your spirit anything that steals these two things from your life is a thief if you have the word and you do not have bread you must use the word to get bread are we together now man shall not live by bread alone but by every word so how real are supernatural interventions does God really visit people? Does God really change the stories of people? Is it true that a man can come to the presence of God, trusting God for a mighty, miraculous intervention, and that that person can actually walk back with a testimony? Is it true that someone can come maybe in debt, owing, borrowing, you know, neck deep in all kinds of financial situations, and God is able to step in, and give that person a miracle it's important that we believe that God is able to do all of this and what is the proof I will tell you the proof that God still moves supernaturally is found all through scripture you see as a believer the foundation of your convictions is first the Word of God before the testimony of anyone who has benefited within your reach. Are we together? The, the basis for our conviction in the kingdom is scripture. Outside of the word of God, you are already at risk. Whatever you believe that is not founded upon the integrity of the word does not have sustainability, does not have longevity. So when we say God is a miracle worker, what is the basis? Thank God for the testimonies that we shared in the altar here. Thank God for the testimonies we're about to receive. But the correct order of your convictions is that number one, the Bible says so, scripture. The Bible tells us in John chapter 20 from verse 30 and 31, the Bible says many other miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. So Jesus was a miracle worker commanding signs and wonders which are not recorded in this book, verse 31, but these are written. So there were miracles that were written, not just stories. Stories were written, parables were written, principles were written, but miracles, supernatural divine interventions were also documented that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you will have life through his name. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. Jesus went about doing good. He always goes about doing good through his spirit now. And the Bible says, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The miracles that we expect are as real as the miracles that happen in the Bible. Does God move supernaturally? Does he wrought miracles in the midst of his people? Ask Abraham and Sarah. They have the answer to your question. Ask Gideon. He will tell you that God can come in and intervene over a family, a family with a background of a lowly estate, and he can lift anyone from any family and bring you to a place of notoriety. Is God able to move in the midst of his people? Esther has an answer for you that God can pick a village girl and within the shortest possible time exalt and honor her so much and bring her to the place of notoriety. Is God able to move and rewrite the stories of men? Ask Ruth. Ruth lost her husband, lost her children. Everything went bad in her life. But God gave her a second chance with beauty and color. Does God move in the midst of his people? 
ask Saul who later became Paul a man who spearheaded the persecution of the church and now by mercy he later became the chief apostle spearheading and frontiering the program of God how real are miracles asked the woman with the issue of blood that even if it's after 12 years of oppression 12 years of spending all her wages on physicians and practitioners and she was in no way better in one moment she touched the hem of his garment and received her miracle how real are miracles asked blind Bartimeo. he would tell you that no matter how deserted you've been with any kind of blindness physical spiritual that god is able to with one command from his word turn that blindness and you receive your sight how about Lazarus? how about the woman the widow at nain how real are miracles ask the woman in zarephath having only a little morsel of flour for her bread and then a bit of water for survival for her and her son the prophet appears and says surely according to the word of the lord your flour will not be spent your water will not deplete and the bible says it was so according to the word of the man of god how real are miracles signs and wonders Ask the nation of Israel in the days of Jehoshaphat that they were surrounded by enemies. It was clear that they were going to be defeated. But when they laid down their weapons of war and began to chant praises unto God, the Lord himself discomfited their enemies and they began to kill themselves, one helping to kill the other. How real are miracles? Ask Jesus at his crusade using five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 people and the Bible tells us there were 12 baskets. This was aside women and children. How real are miracles? Ask Jesus himself. The one who died, went to the grave, was buried with proof. The Bible says on the third day he resurrected by the glory of the Father. Are we together now? That everything that is dead and buried under a certain condition, it can come back to life again. I feel like speaking over someone. I don't know what died. I don't even know what was buried. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I invoke the power that raised Christ from the dead. Everything dead or dying in your body, dead or dying in your finances, it must answer, it must hear the voice of the Lord and come back to life tonight in the name of Jesus. 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 Please be seated. How real are miracles? Go to the book of John chapter 2 and you will see that an embarrassment was going to happen at a wedding feast in Cana of Galilee. And the Bible says at the instruction of Jesus, six pots were filled with water and they turned to wine supernaturally. That means it is not God's will for believers to, to perpetually dwell in shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Hallelujah. This is the God of the Bible. God is able to step in and work mighty miracles. It is important for you to believe tonight that he is Savior, he is Lord, he is King. But please believe that he is a miracle worker. Miracles are real. Find a way to believe it. Healings are real. Your organs were created. The Bible says, John chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, without him was all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Anything made that was made. As humans, there are times where we constructed beautiful structures and tornadoes or rains or storms or floods came and washed them away. We felt bad, but our consolation was that we had the power to rebuild again. Are we together now? And we went back to rebuild those structures sometimes better than what was there. If that is true for men, how much the God of heaven? I'm praying for someone. I don't know what organ you have lost. I don't know what satanic verdict has come upon your life. But in the name of Jesus, may God give you brand new organs tonight. Brand new organs tonight. In the name of Jesus. It seems to me like we live in a world now that is gradually getting more and more carnal, more and more fleshly, more and more sensual. 
to an extent that every time we hear of any spectacular manifestation of the spirit the first thing that comes to our mind is either the man of god is lying exaggerating you know and so on and so forth and sometimes we are right unfortunately but i want you to never get used to the the uh, what i call it the limitations that come with the sense realm such that we we limit god to science we limit god to sociology we limit god to philosophy there is an aspect of philosophy science sociology that can explain god but there are dimensions in god that none of these bodies of knowledge can explain are we together we need to be very careful so that we don't reduce God to become a scientific experiment. If we cannot interpret how 1 plus 1 becomes 10, we conclude that it is wrong, it cannot be God. Let me tell you the truth. God is a God of principles, but God is the Almighty. It is within His power to do anything, anyhow, and He's still right. Are we together now? He's not bound by any principle. It is within His power. There is no injustice. There is no reference reference for judging him no he cannot be judged by anyone he is god all by himself he began the beginning and so he qualifies to manipulate anything according to his will and it is still righteous are we together now i'm here to shake you to really believe that god is a miracle worker because there are many people who do not believe. Someone may come with a crutch, for instance, and maybe you had a broken bone, maybe you are not able to walk, maybe for some arthritis, and you are seated there and you've seen miracles and you are hoping things will happen, but the truth is that for many people, they do not yet believe that this can actually happen. It is the reason why real miracles are very powerful because they comfort believers and build faith in them. But you'll be surprised Believing the works of God is the ministry of the Holy Spirit because there are people who saw Jesus, they walked and saw miracles every day and yet the Bible says some doubted. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles, oh, I do. I really believe in miracles. I believe that God is able to wipe the tears of people supernaturally. I believe that miracles are an act of God's mercy an act of God's law because he knows that men are not as detailed to walk in keeping with every principle that should produce results we are humans and many times we default on the principle so we do not get the kind of results that principles should deliver either because of carelessness because of ignorance because of attacks and so he has scheduled orchestrations of his mercy called the miraculous to bail us out this is proof of love hallelujah God knows that the way to prosper is to exchange value to turn your value to products and services to serve it excellently but he also knows that there are times that things are not as ideal as that and so he he keeps as a reserve supernatural power to prosper prophetically that in, in addition to your value that there are times that it can fail and the power of God can descend upon your life and turn your life around overnight if you do not believe this your life will be a plethora of bad stories and pain. God designed that the food we eat, the plants and the trees, by themselves, they should provide enough health and nourishment. But he knows that there are times for various reasons we are not able to derive maximum health and utility from all of these plants and animals. He knows that there are times that the devil manipulates the systems, that there are times there can be death in the port. And so he left his healing power that if and when these variables fail, he is still God and his love still insists that we are healed. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to spend our life living off miracles. But miracles are a testament of God's mercy because provided you are human, you will need a miracle one day. Are we together now? You heard the story of the gentleman. Money was deposited in his account and according to him for nothing at all that he did, the money disappeared and he was about to get into trouble. At that point, it may not necessarily be an issue of carelessness. It may not be an issue of negligence. How about a man who leaves his house in the morning and unfortunately, let's say his car develops some problem or maybe he has some accident someone hits his car 
he may not be a making of himself he was as careful as he could be but these are realities in life miracles are powerful Miracles demonstrate to the saints that God is alive. Miracles demonstrate that God is still alive and that he is thoughtful and mindful of you. I'm praying for you. May a unique miracle from heaven come as a letter from Jesus to you tonight. For some of you, what God will do in your life will be him saying, I still know your name and I'm still ready to visit you as I said to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How do you tame the joy that is expressed in the life of someone, for instance? Let's say someone who has been diagnosed having some blood condition and it is clear that that person is about to die. 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, say for instance, as a sickler in pain and in one moment God visits the person. How do you tame that kind of joy? Or someone who has been trusting God to get a job, it's interrupted his focus. He's not able to go to church because he doesn't even have transport and he's trusting God to bring beauty and color so that he can serve him. I hope you know that the purpose of liberty is to allow you the luxury of serving the Lord without pain. He says, let my people go that they may go and serve me. Every time God brings you out of bondage, he's giving you ample space. He's giving you the resources and the opportunity to concentrate on destiny. There is nothing that distracts destiny like setbacks. Setbacks including poverty, all kinds of problems. My God will give you peace tonight. I say to you again, my God will give you peace tonight. Ah, the Holy Ghost will move tonight as an usher from row to row finding out what is distracting your focus finding what is not allowing you to pray finding out what is not allowing you to fast finding out what is not allowing you to sleep and my God will correct it by his power my God will correct it by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means let me tell you this pain and trouble and despair they have a goal when orchestrated by satan and demon spirits the ultimate goal is to attack your faith he said satan desire to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not that's what he really wants to attack your faith when he attacks your faith, he attacks your joy. When he attacks your joy, he attacks your peace. And he leaves you to die naturally. Because when you lose faith, when you lose joy, when you lose peace, it's over for you. Are we together? Yeah. So how real are miracles? They are as real as every story documented in this Bible. How real are miracles? They are as real and potent as the character of the one who produces them. As real, as secured, as stable as the character of the one who produces them. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Is that still in your Bible? The same today. I like the fact that he's the same today. The same forever. Jesus Christ, the same. In other words, Jesus Christ, the healer yesterday. He's still the healer today, the lifter yesterday. He's still the lifter today, the blesser yesterday. He's still the blesser today. The rewriter of stories and destinies yesterday. He's still the same today and he will be the same forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Hmm. Miracles are as real as the character of the God that produces them. He says, I am the Lord and I change it not. I am consistent in my character. Once I have spoken and twice have you heard that power belonged to the Lord. He is all powerful. He is still all powerful. He was El Shaddai yesterday. He is still El Shaddai today. He is El Shaddai forever. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Second question. And this is the more important question tonight. What does it take? To experience the liberating power of God in my life and your life tonight. Seeing that God is still a miracle worker. God is still a proof producer. God still visits men. He still visits men rewriting their stories as he did in scripture. As he's done every day to someone. 
The greater question tonight is that what does it take to experience the liberating power of God? What does it take to experience victory in your life and my life even tonight? This is why we are gathered. What does it take to experience tonight the power that heals? What does it take to experience the power that delivers? What does it take to experience the power that restores? What does it take to experience the power that can rest upon a man and orchestrate supernatural supplies? I was meditating on this scripture and is, um, I mean on, on, on my notes and a scripture quickened into my spirit. I shouted like a madman, my God shall supply all your needs. I've read that scripture many times, but it just occurred to me that needs are supplied. And it says, my God shall supply all your needs. All your needs. That means God is aware that we have needs and that there is a provision in his economy to supply for all your needs. According to his riches in glory, all your needs, financial needs, all your needs, relational needs, all your needs, ministry needs. I'm praying for someone who believes this scripture that my God, like Paul said, tonight, not tomorrow, not after service, as the service is ongoing, may my God walk around your row, walk around your aisle and supply all your needs in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it take to experience the power that makes greatness out of an ordinary person. It is true that God makes great. The Bible says it is within his power to make great. It is within his power that God can increase a man's greatness and comfort that man on every side. What does it take to experience the power that can provide supernatural direction. It says, thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul. What does it take to experience the power that produces laughter? Sarah laughed and said, all who hear this will laugh with me. You have turned my mourning to dancing, he says. You have turned my sorrow to joy. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion by that same power, it says we were like them that dream and they said among the heathen, the Lord had done great things for us. It says the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Whereof we are glad. Hmm. I'm going to give you very quickly three keys that are responsible for experiencing the liberating power of Jesus. And I tell you, I sense in my heart that as I bring these keys, the power of the Holy Spirit will be resting on people, quickening them, number one, to believe these truths, but number two, releasing results already in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you tonight. You will not need to tell anybody that you are in a strong covenant with God. Your results will speak evidently. Evidently, evidently, you will not have to tell anyone you came to church. God will sign upon your life. He will sign upon your destiny. He will sign upon your family. It will be evidence to men that you love God. It will be evidence to men that you believe in God. You believe that shout amen. amen. Number one, what is the first key? To experiencing the liberating power of God even tonight. The first key is the hearing of faith. Luke chapter 5 and verse 15. Please be attentive. God is handing to you the keys that control the miracles you seek to receive tonight. Be attentive by the Spirit. And those following online, make sure you are writing. Take notes and listen. Don't just wait with prayer requests. No. Take notes and listen. Listen. The Spirit of God is handing to you the keys. They are irrefutable keys that control the administration of the power of God over a man, a family, a business. Doesn't matter what the challenge is. All miracles begin. The working of miracles starts with the hearing of faith. Are we together? The Bible says, but so much the more went out a fame abroad of him and great multitudes, like great multitudes have gathered here tonight, great multitudes came together, listen, 
to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. They didn't just come to be healed. It starts with the hearing of faith. It is not every kind of hearing that is called the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. I wrote here that faith to receive comes when you hear certain truths from scripture. The basis for the hearing of faith is that if the information that is communicated is scripture based, then your hearing becomes a hearing that produces faith. There is the hearing of lamentation. There is the hearing of doubt and fear. Are we together? But there is the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith is when you hear a communication that is derived from scripture, it imparts faith to your spirit. The hearing of faith. The faith to receive, even tonight, comes when you hear truths from scripture. For instance, when you hear that God is all powerful, what you are hearing now is consistent with the integrity of the word. So what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. It produces faith within your spirit because it is true that God is all powerful. It says, our Lord God, thou hast created the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Nothing is impossible for you. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. When you hear a preacher speak like this, what you are hearing is the hearing of faith. If you're with me, say amen. amen. When you hear that God desires you to be healed, God desires you to be delivered. God desires you to prosper. God desires you to be great. That is the hearing of faith. Because all of that information is consistent with God's desire. He says, I desire speaking by the Spirit that ye prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. That he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us, how much more with him shall he give us all things to enjoy? God for you. When you hear that God desires your healing, he says, None, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The hearing of faith is the hearing that is consistent with the speakings of scripture. Are we together? Most people hear, but it is not the hearing of faith. They hear the, the hearing of opinions, the hearing of doubts, the hearing of fear. Are we together now? Yes. The hearing of faith is that you must hear which that is consistent, that which is consistent with the word of God, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. It says the same was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1.16 Speaking about the supremacy of the word. That all things were created by him. All things were created that are in heaven. That are in earth visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers and so on and so forth. It says they were created by him and they were created for him. The hearing of faith. Now that you are hearing what I'm saying, you are receiving it by in your spirit. Ah, so it is true that this financial situation, God is more interested in it than I am interested in. Listen, when you know this, your, your faith is built. Are we together now? This family calamity, this sickness, this disease is not giving God glory. God is not glorified in it at all. The hearing of faith. It gets you angry. A holy dissatisfaction is planted upon your spirit by reason of what you hear. Now you'll be ready to receive, to release your faith to receive. Most believers want miracles, but they are not even sure what the word of God says concerning their desires. Hallelujah. They looked at Jesus one time and said, if you are willing, I can be made clean. And Jesus said, I'm willing, be clean. I am willing. If it is my willingness, you can be sure that I am willing. It is God who is at work in us both to will and to do. He plans the desire and he midwives the manifestation both to will and to do. Every godly desire that is put in your spirit, provided it will glorify the Christ, you can be sure that God is behind it. Are we together now? 
let me ask you an honest question do you think you are a better christian if you are able to pay the school fees of your children and live a life of dignity please answer me do you think you'll be a better christian if you are free from all of these medical reports that come to you every week with varying results over your health do you think you'll be a better christian do you think you'll be a better Christian when you are healthy and strong and the doctor tells you that you are 50 but your organs look like you are 20? Does that sound like good news to you? Do you think that you will be able to serve God better as he promotes you and gives you capacity to earn more, to live a decent life and to help others to be blessed? Does that look like the blessing of Abraham working in you? Man of God, do you think you'll be a more effective man when you walk with the anointing of the Spirit in ever-increasing dimensions that the things that could not happen yesterday through your ministry, now you obtain grace of the Spirit and you are able to wrought mighty things by the Spirit. Will it make you an effective witness? Yes, sir. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Everything that can help you serve God well, don't reject it. Are we together now? Everything that can help you serve God well, if good health will help you serve God well, open up your heart to embrace it. If peace of mind, serenity of mind will help you serve God well, you can be sure that God will be more than willing to bring it. Because the Bible says, watch this now, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God desires, he desires that as we serve his purposes, we live victorious lives. He's not a wicked God, he's not a wicked father that desires us to indefinitely remain in pain, loss, defeat, retrogression, and then he burdens us with a threat to serve him. That is not the portrait of a kind father. The Bible says God is love. Shout that after me, please. God is love. One more time. When you say a person is love, that means every overflow of the attributes of love should be found in the person. A person who is genuinely loving will most likely be kind. Am I right? A person who is loving will most likely be a giver. The person who is loving will most likely be caring. The person who is loving will most likely be thoughtful with a lot of empathy. The person who has love will most likely be patient, very understanding, very accommodating, very hospitable. So when you say God is love, don't just give a religious understanding. All the attributes that support love must be found in him. Else that scripture would have told a lie. God is love. He gives. God is love. He lifts. God is love. He restores. God is love. He will not watch you crying and ignore you. That is the reason why he's made his spirit, he's made his word, he's made his power available for you to know what he can do for you tonight. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are hearing this, may faith, the faith to receive all that God has in store for you, whether for your healing, whether for your liberty, let that faith be built in your spirit now. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you ignore the hearing of faith, you have shortchanged yourself as far as receiving from God is concerned. It is the reason why Satan hates the word. He hates the ministry of the word. Because as the word comes, understanding comes. With understanding, conviction is built or conviction is strengthened. Listen carefully. Conviction at the instance of the teaching of the word comes or conviction is built. And that is another name for faith. Your conviction plus the grace to take actions that support your conviction. God is only committed to perform at the point of your manifesting faith. So key number one, you want to experience the liberating power of God, the restoring power, the healing power of Jesus. It comes through the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. Nothing happening to you today is new. Let me comfort you. There is nothing happening in your life and my life today that is new. Who is listening? You have to believe this. 
Apostle, my, I have a very unique health concern. I understand your pain, but I submit to you it is not new. And if you think it is new, ask the man Job. If you think it is new, ask the man at Bethesda for 38 years. If you think it is new, ask the woman with the issue of blood. If you think it is new, you go ahead and ask people in the Bible who were plagued with all kinds of infirmities. How about those the Bible says were born with that condition? For most of us, we were not even born with a condition. It just happened as, as, as we sojourned. But there were people who were born with it. And yet God visited them. There is nothing that is new. Let that comfort you tonight. How about financial situations? Refer to Job, a man who lost his estate, lost his finances, lost everything overnight. Worst off, he lost all the people who could help him get back again. They disappeared from his life. Nothing that happens to you now is new. Joblessness, it's always been there. You find a parallel of it in scripture. Delay, retrogression, satanic attacks, curses, bondage. Talk about the nation of Israel in Egypt for 430 years. You know what it means? That some grew and died in Egypt, never knowing that deliverance was a possibility. Yet he told Abraham that after 400 years, that deliverance will come to God's people. The Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and the thing that will be. There is nothing new under the sun. You know why? Because Satan uses the same men to produce the same thing. And there is only so much we can stretch in terms of our creativity and our ideas. There's only so much. The wickedness of men is defined. There's only so much they can think about. But I'm praying for you. It doesn't matter in what direction Satan has come around your life. The God who did it before in the Bible, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, may he do it in your life even tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you learning? So key number one that controls experiencing the liberating power of God is you must submit yourself to the hearing of faith. Number two, the second key is that you must expect to receive answers from God. You must expect to receive answers from God. Expect to receive answers from God. Even tonight, Proverbs 10, 28. Let's hurry up. The power of expectation. Proverbs 10, 28. The Bible says the hope or the expectation of the righteous shall be gladness. It says, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. When the righteous expect, the Bible says, it is gladness. I think that should be NIV or maybe amplified. That the hope of the righteous is gladness or joy. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 18. Expect to receive answers from God. This is the second key. Let this be a prophetic word for someone. Surely there is an end. Surely there is an end to rent issues. Ay, 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 ay. Surely there is an end to shame and reproach. Surely there is an end to crying every night. Surely there is an end to endless court cases. Surely there is an end to begging and borrowing. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. May tonight be the end in the name of Jesus. He says, surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. What is expectation? A strong belief that something will happen. A strong belief, a resolve within your heart that something, a desired outcome will happen. What is expectation? A state of strong optimism. A state of strong optimism. I know that I know that I know that I know that I will walk out of this place healed. It's called expectation. Hallelujah. A strong belief that everything God has said will happen in your life. Now, let me tell you something. Expectation has an attitude. There is an attitude to expectation. Show me two believers. And while the word of God is coming like it is coming right now, for the one, you can see that there is an attitude of joy excitement enthusiasm you are too expectant you you know you will be disappointed if god does not move over your life and another is passive careless full of doubt 
Well, amen, he looks around and sees people lifting their hands and says, oh, well, let me lift my own hand too. I don't even know what they are doing. You see, expectation has an attitude. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells us that Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer and they found a man who had been at Get Beautiful that he comes there every day, carried to and fro, and he looked at them and the Bible says that Peter and John, he begged them for arms. Beg them as you usually do. And then the Bible says in verse 4, Peter and John, Peter fastening his eyes upon him said, look on us. I like verse 5. Let that be a lesson for someone tonight. The Bible says he gave heed to them, expecting to receive. My only encouragement is that don't expect to receive something. You must define your expectation. Give us this day, expecting to receive healing expecting to receive a breakthrough expecting to receive deliverance is someone learning now expecting to receive something from them now do you know that most believers and the lord put this in my spirit yesterday he said most mature believers do not grow because with their expectation they deaden their appetite i mean with their growth they deaden their appetite for expectations and it's true most matured Christians stop growing because they stop expecting. It's a usual service. God has done, I know, I'm, I'm trusting, I'm not sick, I'm not in pain. Ah, things are going here and there, you see, and they don't receive anything again. Most matured Christians, when he said this, I took out time to table my own expectation and I prayed. I said, I will not be familiar with you. Just because you are using me does not mean I will allow myself to be cheated. When God comes, he blesses whoever is hungry, including the one preaching. The arrogant who is hungry and, and sounds like you are a fool. You know there's a way they can share food in a program and pass you because of your arrogance? You are too proud. You look like, oh, this is not my kind of thing. And they feel that this food is too big for you, whereas you are hungry. And they pass you and leave you there. Because you have given an attitude that your kind does not need it. They just say, okay, it looks like you like water. You say, yes, water. And you are starving, you are hungry. Whereas you really want food. There are others who don't hide it. As the food is coming, they say, madam, wait, you are passing me. I'm not misbehaving, but I will not allow my portion to leave me. That is the kind of hunger. If you are too proud tonight, say, well, you are dying of a diagnosis. And whilst the power of God is coming, people are lifting their hands to receive. You are just watching, well, let's see here and there. My brother, you are the one who is suffering it. The one who wears the hurting shoe is the one who knows where it hurts. And so you must make up your mind. If your word comes, you receive. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, expect to receive something from the Lord. At every level, there is something more God can do. Did you hear what I said? At every level. Some of us here, in all fairness, you have seen the faithfulness of God. And there's not much you are trusting that he does. But if you really are attuned with God's program, there will always be something more you are praying that God does in your life. Either greater grace, greater power, greater fire, greater ability from the spirit are we together there is always something more i'm praying for you what god has not done before may he do it tonight what god has not done before the kind of anointing he's not yet brought to your life the kind of open doors he has not yet brought in spite of the ones he has done before we thank him for yesterday's blessings but i'm praying for you see new things in your life Handle new dimensions in your life. I say it again, see new things in your life. Handle new dimensions in your life. Apostle, God has been faithful to me. I agree. But has he brought you to a level where you can lend to nations? Has he brought you to a level where you can finance his program? Don't tell me you are rich. How rich? Enough to sponsor the gospel without being affected? If you are not there, open up your heart. There can always be more. I pray for you again. See new things. See new things. See new things. See new things. In your life and in your destiny. Experience the more of God. Please be seated. You must expect to receive. If you are sick tonight, as the word of God comes, expect to be healed. 
oh, I'm having high blood pressure, I'm having, say, HIV, I'm having symptoms of cancer, some prostate condition. I've been told by a doctor that I have this. Maybe I'm a sickler, trusting God to change my genotype. Don't be careless. You see, we come as a congregation, as a family, but when the Spirit of God begins to move, it is per person, per faith. So in your mind, the whole crowd disappears and you imagine that God is speaking to an audience of one. That one being you. Lord, it is me and you tonight. I'm trusting that you wipe my tears. I came with my spouse, but with all due respect, I love my spouse. We'll see our service. But as it is now, Lord, visit me. Turn my morning to dancing. I came with my business partner. Thank God for my business partner. But this one, Lord, it is me and you. Are we together now? expectation 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 Hi. look let me tell you 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 see that there are people in church who always receive do you know why their expectations are to the roof some of them fast and pray before they arrive church some of them arrive in the morning and they'll be praying like madmen before service starts foiling their expectations there are others who arrive and sit and just enjoy the worship as if they're in a club and they share the grace and leave the Lord being in that place and they never know it hallelujah father you even encourage me by giving somebody an opportunity to testify my expectations Lord finish it you've started already I I've already had a part of my testimony I, I shouldn't go back without results are we together say father shout it say father tonight I release my faith visit me turn it into prayer in one minute I release my faith I release my faith I release my faith optimistic that this captivity will be turned around optimistic that you will open up doors for me it doesn't cost you anything to touch the heart of my helper it doesn't cost you anything to press oil upon my life for a new dimension in Jesus name we pray so key number one to see the mighty hand of God tonight the hearing of faith number two you must expect to receive answers from God Number three, the third key is that you must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired result. You must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results. I'll take that again. You must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results your desired miracle you must listen for and obey the instructions connected to your desired results now i wrote here and i want you to listen that every manifestation of god's power is connected to an instruction every manifestation of god's power if it is the god of heaven if it is the god of the bible manifestations are connected to divine instructions whether it is to fill six pots with water, like you find in John chapter 2 from verse 5 to 8. They came to Jesus desiring a miracle. And the Bible says that they feel Jesus instructed that they fill six pots with water. And having done that, he instructed them to take the risk. There is always a risk component to faith. You know what it meant for you to take water without tasting it yourself and then to take it to the rulers? What if the water did not turn to wine? That's why it is called faith. Your confident assurance that God will live up to your expectation. How about John chapter 5, 8 and 9? The man at Bethesda. Jesus gave him an instruction. He said, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Don't give me a 38 year old excuse. Rise up, take up your bed. Your excuse has been for 38 years, but in one minute, if you desire a miracle from me, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Verse 9, 
the Bible says that immediately the man was made whole and he took up his bed and walked on the same day not the same week the same day are we together every manifestation of God is connected to an instruction please listen this right here ladies and gentlemen as subtle as it is is the missing link it is the reason why many believers do not receive from God they hear the word of faith like you have heard truly they have expectations in their hearts but many have not been trained to understand that somewhere in the equation of your miracle this is why it is called the walking of miracles somewhere in the equation of your miracle an instruction will come when that instruction comes you listen for it and then you obtain grace to obey let's consider a lesson and then we'll begin to pray second kings chapter 5 please give us from verse 10 to 12 this was the story of naaman i want to draw a very powerful lesson that if you want to see the mighty hand of god then you must be ready to listen for and attend to every divine prophetic instruction that comes so naaman is desiring healing and he's been sent to Elisha and watch this now the Bible says Elisha sent a messenger Elisha did not even come out he sent a messenger to him saying go and wash listen now go and wash seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean verse 11 this usually is the challenge of many in church the Bible says but Naaman was angry what was his anger? He went away and said, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike or wave his hand over the place of my injury and recover the leper. And he was angry. And then he said, Are not Abana and Papha, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters that means are there no better nobler more intelligent scientific instructions you can give what do you mean by lift your hands what do you mean by shout amen what do you mean by shout jesus what do you mean by lay your hands where it hurts are there no more intelligent and the bible says he was angry he wanted to suggest to the prophet how he would be healed and the bible says that he turned away go back to verse 12 please he turned away and went away in rage he turned and went away in rage i have prayed for many people and sometimes it's very very funny how i pray for people especially people who maybe are on prayer lines and so on and so forth and they can come with very serious issues and sometimes i respect their pain their enthusiasm and they say apostle if you know my problem i said don't worry I, I, let me say this thing. I'm sorry we don't have the time but you just believe and then sometimes I tell them in the name of Jesus is done you see the shock mixed with anger all this pain for it is done you are like Naaman it is done means what some I mean well years ago it doesn't happen much now years ago people even used to be angry and say I didn't fall ah, I didn't fall I didn't fall come on now I watch people shout left and right and then I, I traveled all the way and you tell me it is done? This was the annoyance of Naaman. He came all the way, very, very long way. And then the prophet simply sends Gehazi to give him an instruction. Go and wash seven times, he says. And verse 13, that's a lesson for someone now. Verse 13, media. And the Bible says, And the servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, would thou not have done it? How much rather when he said to you, go and wash and be clean. And he said, eh. So you are saying I should do it. Okay, let me lay my hands. I hope I'll be healed. 14. The Bible says he obeyed that instruction. He went down and dipped himself. He submitted himself to that instruction according to the saying of the man of God. I like this. And because God confirms the word of his servants, he performs the counsel of his messengers. The Bible says his flesh came again like the flesh of a little child and he was clean. I pray for you. As you hear prophetic instructions and obey them with childlike faith, may God surprise you tonight. May God surprise you tonight. May God surprise you tonight. 
Hallelujah. There are three ways to receive instructions. One, it comes to you by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's a unique instruction that God gives to you. Two, it comes usually by the man of God God is using to administer his power to you. Number three, there are times that as an act of faith, the instruction comes within your own spirit. Nobody told the woman with the issue of blood to touch Jesus. It was not the Holy Ghost. It's not recorded there. The Bible says she said to herself, the same way the prodigal son said to himself, and the Bible says, say not in your heart. That means that there is a voice within your spirit. Are we together now? But the more generic way of receiving is to receive from the vessel that God is using to prime and to build your faith. That whilst you hear, instructions are going to be coming shortly. Listen, take your eyes away from your pain. Take your eyes away from your sad story. I know you came with your prayer request. Take your eyes for a moment away from it and look to Jesus. See, when you look to a man of God, it's not idolatry. You're not, this is all of me. There's not much that can be done to you from me by my own strength. The Bible already bails us out by teaching you that our sufficiency is not in ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God who has made us able, able ministers. Are we together? Not of the letter, but of the spirit, for the spirit kill it, the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. So every instruction you are hearing, you must believe that these are instructions coming from the throne, passing through a vessel to you, and with childlike faith. So if it's an instruction that yields your deliverance, your heart must be open. There, there's no special demon on you that cannot live. Are we together now? You cannot be, God forbid, but no, nobody here can be more demonized than the madman in Gadara. That guy had a legion of demons. And yet with one word they left. Nobody can be more sick in my opinion than, than uh, uh, Job was. He had boils over his body. He was incapacitated, left for dead. The wife even encouraged him to just die and let her rest. And yet God restored him. How about Naaman? The Bible says God restored his flesh and it was like that of a baby. How about Hezekiah? God turned his life, adding 15 years to his life. How about Samaria? God turned a whole nation overnight. God for you. But if you are ready to listen for and to obey divine prophetic instructions, is someone learning now? I wrote something here and I want you to please listen as we prepare to pray. The awareness of the instruction does not produce results. It is acting on the instruction that delivers results. The awareness of the instruction you should engage for your liberty is not what brings results. Are we together? Oh, I'm aware. He said, stand up, okay? He said, lift your hands. I am aware. That's not where you get the results. It is the childlike obedience to the instructions, having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is complete. And you see, let me tell you this. The Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit, nor can he discern them. The reason is because they are spiritually discerned. The way of the spirit is beyond the way of science. The way of the spirit is beyond the way of intellect. There are times that prophetic instructions can come. It may not make sense to you. It is the way of God. Yours is to obey with childlike faith. And if it is true that it is God, you see the results that follow. If you do not see the results that follow, most likely the man of God is acting in the flesh. Are we together now? Fill six pots with water. And they did. Notice it was until they obeyed the first instruction before the second came. If they did not fill the six pots, there would be no need to tell them another instruction. That may even be a prophetic word for someone that God stopped speaking to you because he realized that his voice is not really valued by you. Every instruction he gives you falls on deaf ears, a careless mind, and a stubborn spirit. And he decided to pause with his speaking to you until he finds your yieldedness. The day you resume your yieldedness, his voice resumes. My God shall supply all my needs According to his riches in glory He will put his angels charge over me 
Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He will put his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Sing it one more time. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. He cares for you enough to bring you healing. He cares for you enough to anoint you. You are a man of God and you came here because you have struggled in ministry. No helpers, no membership, no growth, no revelation, no understanding, oppression. It's as if it's the devil that called you. You can encounter grace. You can encounter grace. What happens in a miracle service? Let me tell you. Number one, God reaches down to his people and wrought great deliverance. Deliverance from demon spirits, deliverance from negative conditions and patterns that tie down the lives and the destinies of God's people. Number two, God brings healing, all kinds of healings, bodily healings, especially emotional healings, wounded spirits, wounded minds. Are we together now? What does God do during a miracle service? He steps in and begins to met out supernatural solutions. Do you know? I have learned that as different as our faces are in truth, so are our challenges. Are we together now? For someone, the challenge may be silly with respect to another person's expectation. For instance, someone is seated here now trusting God to help a patient in the hospital who is dying. To that person, his prayer is not even prosperity or lifting. I want his, his survival. And that is the reason why when God comes, he does not deal with us as a general public. He comes to you one by one, paying detailed interest on your situation as though you were the only one who came to church. This is why he's called Father. God does not visit members. He visits his people. He visits his children one by one. Like he's going to be stepping here shortly. Some of you, what brought you here is confusion. Total confusion over your life, your destiny. Your life is literally scattered like a pack of cards in disarray. There's no beauty, no color, no glory, no nothing. Pale! The devil has brought you to that state. And when God is visiting you, you may not be sick in your body. But pray every prayer that we're going to be praying. Receive every prophetic word as a deposit upon your spirit. Now listen. There are times that you receive a credit alert from an individual to a bank and sometimes they will ask you to allow for a few hours or a few days before it becomes cashable. You understand that? So it's called book balance. When you check your balance, you will see that 1 million Naira, who is receiving that 10 million Naira? Money, 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 money. Amen. Some of you never shouted amen even during the prayer session. As soon as you had money now, you lifted two hands with a shout. Anyway, God is that generous to visit you at the point of your need. Because honestly, some people really need money. May God give it to you. In the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, I will speak it over your life. Unapologetically, may God give it to you. I know you don't believe it. May my God give it to you. May he surprise you in a way that you will say, what is this? This is the Lord's doing. Opening doors, strange doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Listen, everything that will make you an effective believer, tonight we will not spare in releasing it upon your life. If what you need is open doors for finances, th there's no point lying about it. In the name of Jesus, I pray again. May my God help you. May my God support you. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So we're about to pray. For someone you came here sick, 
not even able to stand not even able to speak someone has courted you maybe you came blind maybe you came deaf maybe you came using a walking aid your own world needs the healer to visit you perhaps you may not need more prosperity you spent all your money what you need is to be healed listen for the word that comes for your healing for someone you're not able to explain the occurrences in your life but for certain you know that the hand of satan has to be behind this plethora of tragedies and pain listen for the word that comes for you for someone it may be direction lord should i travel to canada should i travel to us or should i stay here seeing that i've been you know denied visa 12 times 15 times is this still your will i came to church to find out because i don't know what to do again and you may be listening and while the service is ongoing you may hear a scripture or you may hear me speak prophetically for you go again for instance and that's the word and you will say but master we have told all night and god says hey now you go again there was something you didn't carry on your head before hallelujah how about someone whose business has been failing failing you are neck deep in debt how about someone as a family you are in complete disarray nothing is working father is not working mother is not working how about people who are not spiritually vibrant i mean your house is just an open gate for demons to come in and come out nobody has spiritual intelligence enough to stand and say restore to become a wall of protection and defense over your family and whilst you are sitting you will encounter an anointing and you will go back with a greater prayer fire and begin to generate power in the spirit rewrite your family story again usually when God wants to visit families he does not come to everybody he uses one available person once he gets that point of entry he begins to penetrate every nook and cranny of that family through that one person I'm praying for you may that one person be you may that one person tonight be you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ don't wait for your case to be mentioned let your hunger mention your case are we together now don't wait for your case to be mentioned let hunger rise from within your spirit rise from within your spirit I remember someone who told me one day jokingly and said tell God that if you don't mention my case I will come out I will follow whoever is coming. I will hold the person coming out together with the usher and come and stand and say Lord you must visit me even if you will not speak or you touch me you don't have to come out right where you are even now even now even now even now even now now the question for you before we pray is do you believe do you believe outside do you believe I believe in Jesus I really do I believe in his power I believe in his power to turn around a life you know there are many people who don't know what a turn around is they think it's a Pentecostal language a turn around is is just is just a way is a frustrated way of describing the way God turns a man's story we just call it turn around when God gives you rest roundabout that you look left right forward backward and all you see is the faithfulness of God is called a turn around I just described someone's testimony tonight in the name of Jesus Christ may my God give you a turn around that you look around your life and all you see is his faithfulness rise up on your feet full of faith and let's pray shout this after me say father, father. one more time say father, father. tonight father. I, believe I believe that you are the God of all grace and I declare that my faith is ready to receive open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute ready to receive ready to receive ready to receive my healing ready to receive a sent word a global family make sure you pray release your faith as you pray ready to receive a miraculous manifestation
ready to receive my miracle children my miracle spouse are you praying ready to receive miracle open doors it's a miracle service it must answer to its name in my life lift your voice and pray all the overflows pray outside pray our online family release your faith I release my faith. It's a new season in ministry. I release my faith. A new season for my finances. I release my faith. A new season for my family. Someone is praying. A new season for ministry. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to give you the next two or three minutes. You're going to mention specifics. The very areas you are trusting God to attend to. I know that you came with your prayer request, but I'm talking about areas that God will visit now as we pray. You know the areas of pain and concern. Be the prophet of your destiny. Open up your mouth and begin to place a demand. I'm releasing my faith with you. Go ahead and pray. Some of you is healing. Some of you is children. Some of you miracle marriages, a miracle spouse, miracle open doors. Some of you, you are trusting God to give you rest round about. Come on now, pray to the God of all grace, the God of all grace, the God of all flesh. Some of you greater anointing, greater prophetic fire, Greater apostolic fire, greater levels of wisdom, greater levels of insight, financial favor, strange connection to help us of destiny. Some of you are praying for peace. Some of you are praying for increase, enlargement. God desires to give you all things freely, all things freely. silent open your mouth and pray Lord I'm trusting you to bring me out of financial calamity by the wisdom of God by the favor of God by the mercy of God turn my captivity turn my mourning to dancing sorrow to joy heal me oh Lord and I will be healed save me and I will be saved you are my rock, my fortress, my salvation. A few more seconds, you are praying. You are praying seriously to the God that answers prayers. Let this demonic oppression over my life, let this demonic oppression over my family, let this mysterious attack over my health, attack over my relevance, attack over my person, attack over my business, let it give way tonight. name of Jesus majesty majesty your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but alive in your hand
in the name of Jesus who is by the name Shola I'm hearing a name Shola that should be a Yoruba name Shola the Lord is speaking to me Shola if, if, if that is I want to speak to that person very quickly Shola wherever you are if you are in here please let me speak to you very quickly I'm hearing the name Shola shortly we're going to be ministering deliverance there are people who have gone under all kinds of demonic siege Shola where is Shola I'm hearing a Hausa name, Godia. Godia means Thanksgiving in Hausa. That should be someone's name. Your name is Godia. Who is that person? Please come and stand here. Your season has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who you are. Your name is not given to me, but you work in an oil and gas company. You work in an oil and gas company. The Lord told you I was going to call you when you come here. Come. Who is that person? You work in an oil. Please make sure you are not rash. Don't just jump and come out carelessly. You work in an oil and gas company. Palanto salicre feneca paratos calibre di balandoxia. Majesty, you work in an oil and gas company. Shola, I want to pray for your family. Where is Shola? I want to, all of you are Shola. Make sure that's no, I'm not saying you are standing for your brother or sister. If it's not you, just remain where you are. I want to pray for you because the Lord is telling me that He wants to open a door for the family, not just the individual. A door for the family. I'm going to pray for you, but this is for the family. Shola, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I decree and declare. Godia, the power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. The power of God is coming on you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, the yoke of darkness, the yoke of darkness, causes that have tied your life down, tied your family down, in the name that is above all names. I'm releasing the power of God over your life now. Let those forces give way now. What God says to one, he says to all. So that I'm speaking to them does not mean you should not receive. I'm saying it again. These forces of darkness, as they are being delivered, I decree and declare, anyone going through a similar oppression be delivered now. Shola, the Lord is visiting your family, not just you. Family, help that gentleman. Your family, I curse that spirit right now and I declare divine visitation. Divine visitation. Divine visitation. I don't know what God is doing for someone in an oil and gas company, but I'm hearing the Lord saying you will own your own. You will own your own. You will own your own. I'm just saying it as God is putting it in my heart. I decree and declare, let that man to rest on you now. Let that man to rest on you now. Let that grace rest on you now. You will marvel and wonder at the power of prophecy. Let it rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing rain oil. Rain oil. R-A-I-N. O-I-L. I believe that's, I think it's a filling station or something like that. Or a company. Rain Oil. Who works there? Rain Oil. My friend, do you believe in the power of prophecy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do. Where are you from? From Ghana. What am I seeing you do in UK? United Kingdom. Go and write it. Your days are numbered. God I'm is going to Canada. move you to a place of destiny. You believe that? Yes, I, do. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing rest upon you. Let it be a new season for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Oil and gas. God is still speaking to me. You will own your own. This is what God is telling me. I'm prophesying it. I have to, once the word has gone forth, I know that it has left. I'm praying again. Whoever needs to receive this word, I decree and declare, let it rest upon you like the dew of hammer. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for the Godia person I prophesy to, I decree and declare, one testimony after another. This is how you begin to celebrate them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not ministering deliverance to people yet, but pick someone from Kogi State. A strong anointing is going to fall on a lady now. She's from Kogi State. Bring her here. Please return back to your seat. Kogi State. This is how God does his thing. From Kogi State. Kalanto sali krege beranto skobradi zeba. Ebranto zeleke fradige baratos. The Lord is setting a lady from Kogi State. This is her whole family. This thing has existed for more than 50 years. It has tied down the destinies of people. But the fire of God is visiting that lady. She's representing a family from Kogi State. Please bring her here. What God says to one, he says to all. But this is a particular word for someone from Kogi State. Kogi State. There's a lady called Mary. I'm seeing the power of God come on a lady called Mary. Who is Mary? The power of God is resting upon that lady. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, you will recover. You will recover. You will recover. You will recover in the name of Jesus Christ. You will recover. I'm prophesying the word of recovery for one Mary. Mary, the Lord is speaking to you in the name of Jesus Christ. How forcible are right words. When God brings a prophetic word, just know that an end has come to that situation. Madam, Mary, I declare be set free now. Be set free now. In the name of Jesus. There's someone by the left side of the balcony. I'm seeing like fire resting on someone by the left side of the balcony you may not be able to help please help the person so they don't injure themselves the left side of the balcony the lord is telling me i am changing your story i am changing your story the left side of the balcony what he says to one he says to all let there be that deliverance for you in jesus name in jesus name now hear me everyone who is going to respond to this prophetic declaration let me tell you what you'll be responding to the spirit of stagnation has tied you down. I'm about to pray for you and the power of God will rest on you. All those who are coming under the anointing now, when that anointing rests on you, just know that you have been delivered from stagnation. I want you to bring them out, ushers. I decree and declare, as the Lord is ministering to me, everyone here who has suffered stagnation, you have been kept at the same level. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now, let the power of the Holy Spirit locate you where you are and bring you deliverance now. Look, apareke parus pregata. Locate you where you are. Stagnated in life, stagnated in destiny. Be delivered now. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray that everything that represents stagnancy, pegging me, keeping me in the same position, I take authority over it in Jesus' name. Is someone praying? Please bring them out. Everyone under the influence of this demonic spirit of stagnation gives way now. Stagnation in life and in destiny. Stagnation in life and in destiny. Outside. All the overflows following online be set free this moment. Be set free this moment. By the power of the Holy Ghost, be released to go forward. Be released to go forward. Be released now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released to go forward in the name of Jesus. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. Please bring them out quickly. I want to pray something the Lord is putting in my heart now. I remember praying this prayer during one of the miracle services and the Lord is asking me to pray. There is something connected to a demonic lineage of priesthood connected to a family demonic lineage of priesthood whether someone from that family and that lineage directly served idols or was a medium to contacting the divine and this thing has affected many families i want to pray for you right now wherever you are i stretch my hands i want you to bring them out my god there is a mighty deliverance about to happen everything by demonic orchestration that has tied everyone here who has come by the blood of the eternal covenant be released now be released now i set those altars on fire now on fire now on fire now aparakos ketebelekata on fire now now that you are born again i break the chain between you and ancestry the chain between you and idol worship the chain between you and superstition in the name of jesus christ break free from idol worship the lord is setting people free you may not even know that this has tied your destiny down but the Lord sent you here tonight to experience liberty. Liberty indeed. Again, I'm praying for someone. Every cord that has tied you to the yokes of ancestry, the covenant of darkness and dark powers, in the name of Jesus, be delivered this moment. Bring them out. Be delivered this moment. Everyone's name that is on any demonic altar, for your destruction, for chaos, and for anarchy. If the blood could blot out every handwriting, then I decree and declare every coven carrying your name, carrying your mission, carrying your destiny, let it be consumed by fire now. Consumed by fire now consumed by fire now in the name of Jesus Christ Kalate paratos kavrida meleke paranto sigetes lekro sabira tu sabrenda baladus kiata good things never stay in your hands it comes but it leaves it comes but it leaves just when you are about to hold good news something happens and it loses from your hand i pray for you whoever this person is by this prophetic word everything causing good things to slip out of your hands i curse it now in the name of jesus i curse it now in the name of jesus i curse it now in the name of jesus i curse it now in the name of jesus Magdalene I'm hearing a name Magdalene I'm about to pray for the sick now but I'm hearing a name Magdalene and the Lord is telling me he's bringing restoration for Magdalene he's bringing restoration it will be like a dream restoration that before the end of November Magdalene I don't know who that person is in the name of Jesus God is bringing supernatural restoration whatever it is that you have lost by this prophetic word I speak to you, experience restoration in the name of Jesus. Now let's pray. I'm going to minister deliverance proper now in the next two, three minutes. I believe in deliverance. I do. Absolutely. I believe that people can be victims of satanic conditions and oppressions and behind many inexplainable situations are demonic occurrences. It's about to give way now. I'm going to ask you to shout that name, Jesus. You do not shout it as a ritual. It's not a journey or a, some kind of mental formula. 
I will ask you to shout it by the Spirit. There is an anointing upon that instruction. Remember what I taught you? At the shout of that name, Jesus, anyone who is under the influence of any kind of yoke, familiar spirits, the workings of darkness, as you shout that name just once with faith in your heart, fire will rest upon your life and through you rest upon your family. I want you to quickly bring those people out so that I'll pray for them. And then I want to pray for the sick in the name that is above all names. Father, you have called this a miracle service. There are lives and destinies under all kinds of yokes. I decree and declare for everyone under the sound of my voice, every spirit that has oppressed you, every negative condition that is demonically engineered, as you shout that name, be free once and for all. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be free now. Be released now. Outside, be released. All the overflows, be released. Inside, be released. The balconies, be released. Connecting online, be released in the name of Jesus. Please bring them out very quickly. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bring them out. In the name of Jesus, oppressions of wickedness, be set free right now. Yokes, causes, ancestry, orchestrations of delay, orchestrations of retrogression, be set free now for that gentleman, for that sister, that daughter of Abraham, be set free now, be set free now, be set free now, in the name of Jesus. Bring them out, I'm praying for them by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been kept in one location, in one place. Nothing moves in your life. Nothing grows in your life. Nothing changes in your life. Today as you encounter this anointing, I pray for you. May God move you forward. May God move you forward in a fearful dimension. May God move you forward, move you forward, move your children forward, move your family forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to me and is ministering to me that some of you came here so that you will be found of God. God wants to raise people in your family that becomes an access point for him. And that there are many of you he brought here and there is an anointing. This one is not deliverance. This one is an impartation. God wants to locate you by an anointing to show you that he has put upon you the mantle of a savior over your family. I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus, as you hear me, I decree and declare, let that oil locate you. Let that grace locate you. Ordained to be the savior of your family. Still bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I decree, receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Receive an impartation. Some of you will be the first to bail your family financially. Some of you will be the first to introduce Jesus to your family. Some of you will be the first to help your, your loved ones to rise beyond a certain level. Anyone called into that ministry, I place grace on your life now. I place grace on your life now. Ah, someone is saying, Lord, here am I, send me, send me, send me. I'm still praying for you again. You came to contact grace. You may be the, the weakest. You may be a male, a female, it doesn't matter. I pray for you one more time. An anointing from heaven. Let it land on your head right now. Let it rest on your destiny right now. I'm hearing in my spirit that rejected stone. That rejected stone. 
I don't know what has made you rejected. Maybe in your family, maybe in your destiny, maybe among your contemporaries. Let me prophesy upon you that rejected stone. Let an anointing rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now for an extraordinary destiny. Let it rest upon you now. Open your mouth and shout, say, Father. Say it again, say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I take my place in life and destiny. Open your mouth and pray. I take my place, the place ordained for me, the place commissioned for me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. I may be ordinary, but there is an ordination upon my life. I may be ordinary, but there is a grace on my destiny. And in this season, I decree and declare that I walk in the reality of my call. I walk in the reality of my assignment. The reality of my call. The reality of my assignment. In the name of Jesus, for all those in front here, I decree and declare every oppression of darkness over your life. I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant, it gives way now. It gives way now. Every legal access Satan has over your life, I declare that access broken now. In the name of Jesus, return to your seat rejoicing. I'm hearing the cry of babies, children. I'm hearing the cry of babies like, you know, like a baby crying. And when God ministers like this, I know that someone is about to receive the miracle of the fruit of the womb. I don't know who is trusting God, whether for yourself or for your loved one. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ, according to the time of life, return with your miracle children. Return with twins and triplets in the name of Jesus Christ. Where you have tried and tried and tried and tried and it's not seemed to work. I release an anointing upon you and I decree and declare that this time around it will be your testimony. This time around it will be your testimony. This time around it will be your testimony. I'm seeing a family build an estate but they've been stagnated for a while. Like building a, 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 some unit of houses. This is what I'm seeing. But they've been stagnated for a while. Like something just happened. Peg the resources. And they're not able to continue. Let me use that as a point of contact to pray for everyone here. When God starts a thing, he finishes. But you see, every time you see stagnancy. Where there was once motion. It means that Satan has hijacked that process. For you, it may not be a house you are building. It may be a destiny you are building. It may be your business you are building. It may even be your spiritual life you are building. That you started on a journey successfully so. And for some reason, Satan hijacked it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for someone who is willing to receive. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, what you have started, may it finish in your lifetime. May it be finished in your lifetime. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.